Hi, good morning everyone. So this will be the first lesson for material science and engineering. And this will be the introduction to material science and engineering. Okay, by the way, our reference book will be Material Science and Engineering by Callister, any edition. But I prefer the latest edition, which is the 7th or 8th edition. Okay. First, we talk about the historical perspective of material science and engineering. Basically, when we talk about materials, these are objects that we use. So, literal na bagay siya. Materials are everywhere. Almost everything we use and every aspect of our daily lives is in some way or another influenced by materials. So, lahat na ginagamit natin, halos lahat na ginagamit natin sa araw-araw, yun yung tinatawag nating materials from, say, yung cellphone mo, that is a material, yung mga ginagamit nating panuto, yung damit mo, those are materials. And it is culturally more in it to us that the development and advancement of societies is closely related to the ability of the members of the society to produce and process materials to satisfy their needs. Ibig sabihin, para siyang kaakibat na ng culture natin. So, as you can see, sa history, meron tayong tinatawag na Stone Age, meron tayong tinatawag na Bronze Age, meron tayong tinatawag na Iron Age. So, culturally and historically, kung ano yung gamit ng tao or nung mga naunang tao sa atin, kung anong gamit nilang materials, eh yun din yung level ng advancement nila or development ng society nila. Ganon sila kaunlad. So, parang masasabi natin na kung gano'ng kaunlad ang isang society, ay makikita mo dun sa mga materials na ginagamit nila. So, nagsimula tayo sa Stone Age, wala pa tayong masyadong alam. At... <clears throat> Yung mga ancestors natin is very limited lang yung um, mga bagay na kailang, um, kaya nilang gamitin. And most of it, yung naturally occurring or yung mga nanggaling lang mismo sa nature. Kung ano lang yung nakita nila. So, yun yung Stone Age. So, kaya nga Stone Age kasi bato lang yung kaya nilang gamitin or minsan gumagamit sila ng kahoy, clay, mga balat ng hayop. Doon tayo nagsimula. And habang tumatagal, tumatalino yung tao. And because of that, they learn how to process materials. So, natuto sila at nadiscover nila na, ah, pwede palang ganito kapag ininit ko pala yung bato, pwede siyang matunaw. Or pwede ko mas magiging matibay siya. Ganun yung nangyari. As the time goes by, they discover techniques to create materials with better properties than dust than that, those natural ones such as pottery and various metals. Soon, they discovered that materials properties can be altered, pwede nang mabago, for example, by heat treatments and by addition of other substances. Best, <clears throat> but during these times, materials abused are only selected from a limited set and only the best suited material by virtue of these characteristics is used for a certain application. So, natutunan, natutunan ng tao mula sa bato, uh, na, na, na-discover nila na pwede ko palang gawin to para mas maging matibay pa yung material ko. Pero, again, limited pa rin yung um, resources na tinatawag, yung pagkukuha na natin ng materials. So, ang ginagawa ng tao, kung ano lang yung pinaka-the best material para sa isang certain function, yun lang yung ginagamit nila. Pero, approximately 100 years ago, nung meron ng mga scientists, na-discovery na na um, nung naintindihan na ng mga scientists yung kinalaman ng structure ng materials ay related pala sa properties. Ibig sabihin, nakapag-create na tayo ng mga bagong materials dito sa modern age kasi nga 
nakita natin <clears throat> through various discoveries na pwede mo palang baguhin yung properties ng materials kasi <clears throat> kapag binago mo rin yung structure kasi yung properties and structure ng materials ay may kinalaman sa isa't isa. New materials like metals, plastic, glasses, and fibers have evolved to have specialized characteristics that satisfies the needs of our modern and complex society. <clears throat> modern technologies that make our lives so much easier are closely associated with the accessibility of suitable materials. Technology progresses every time we had an advancement in the understanding of a material type. <clears throat> and from then on, nung nalaman na nila na mayroong relasyon yung structural elements kung saan gawa yung isang material at saka yung properties niya, nagsimula nang maging modern na nakapag-create na tayo ng mga bagong materials, kagaya nga ng metals, plastics, glasses, fibers, etc. So, doon na nagsimula yung pagkakaroon ng tinatawag nating material science and engineering. Basically, ang material science and engineering, pwede natin yung hatiin sa dalawang aspects. We have the material science and of course, the material engineering. Although pinagsasama sila lagi, magkaiba yung function ng material science sa material engineering. When we say material science, it involves examining how the structure and the properties of material are related to each other. On the other hand, Materials engineering is designing the structure of a material to produce a predetermined set of properties on the basis of the structure property correlation. Si material science, pag-aaralan mo lang at obserbahan, obserbahan mo lang yung mga um, pre-existing materials na and how are they related to each other. Pero sa engineering, ikaw mismo yung magde-design. Kaya gagawa ka ng bagong material na nakadepende pa rin dun sa kung anong gusto mong gawin ng material o ng bagay. Okay. Kanina ko pa sinasabi to, yung two words, which is the structure and the property. So, ito yung dalawang words na kailangan natin maintindihan. Kasi, they are almost the definition of a material. Pag sinabi mong material, okay, kailangan mong alamin anong structure niya and because of that structure, ano yung property niya? So, ano nga ba ang structure? When we say structure, the structure of material usually pertains to the arrangement of its internal components. Saan siya gawa? Basically, yun yung ibig sabihin yung structure. Paano siya nagawa? Or, ano yung laman niya sa loob? May pattern ba? Okay, gawa ba siya sa metal elements, non-metallic elements, etc.? And, pag sinabi natin structure, merong iba't ibang levels yan. Una, we have the subatomic level or the subatomic structure. Siyempre, kung ano yung nasa loob ng atoms mismo. Subatomic. So, it involves electrons with individual atoms and their interaction with their nuclei. Then, medyo mas malaking level, sa taas ng level na to, yung tinatawag natin Atomic level, it includes the organization of atoms or molecules relative to one another. Sa subatomic, nasa loob tayo ng atoms. So, paano nag-interact uh, nag yung laman ng atom? Itong atomic, paano nag-interact yung mismong mga atoms sa kapwa nila atoms? Then, on a larger scale, we have the microscopic level. As the name suggests, kailangan na natin ng microscope. So, makikita natin yung interactions between substances sa um, gamit ang mga microscope. So, some types of microscopes. So, dito, larger groups na siya ng atoms. So, usually they are called molecules. Then, yung pinakamalaki, yun yung tinatawag natin macroscopic level. Ito yung level kung saan pwede na natin gamitin yung mata natin. Kasi yung elements natin, ay nakikita na by observation using eye. Hindi na natin kailangan ng mga um, special devices. So that is the structure. Hindi natin, pag sinabi natin structure, gaano siya
saan gawa or paano nagawa ang isang material. So, pwede natin i-divide yan sa five levels, subatomic, atomic, microscopic, uh, four levels na pala, and macroscopic level. Then, another word or another important term, sinasabi natin yung tinatawag nating property. <clears throat> Pag sinabi natin property, it is a material trait in terms of the kind and magnitude of response to a specific imposed stimulus. Generally, definitions of properties are made independent of material shape and size. Anong ibig sabihin yan? So, sa layman's term, pag sinabi natin property, is ito yung reaction ng isang bagay kapag trigger siya ng isang stimulus. Or reaction kapag trigger ng outside forces or outside factors. For example, kapag ininit mo, anong mangyayari sa kanya? Matutunaw ba siya? Mabilis ba siyang matunaw? O matagal ba siyang matunaw? Or for example, kapag nilubog mo siya sa tubig, uh, lulutang ba siya? Or lulubog? Yun yung mga tinatawag natin properties. Meron kang stimulus na trigger mo yung material and titignan mo kung ano yung um, magiging reaction or response ng material. So, pag pinukbukong ba siya ng bato, mababasag ba siya, o walang mangyayari, o madedeform, yun yung tinatawag natin properties. Meron tayong iba't ibang types or categories ng properties. Basically, lahat ng important properties ay madedefine natin into, madedivide natin into six categories. So, we have the mechanical properties which are related to deformation due to an applied force. For example, elastic modulus, stiffness, strength, and toughness. So, pag sinabi natin mechanical properties, deformation due to applied force. Force. Kumamit ka ng pwersa. Kunwari, pinukpok mo. Nung pinukpok mo ba yung metal, uh, naipit ba siya, naging flat pa, o ano nangyari sa kanya? Yun yung mechanical properties. Pag electrical properties, related yan sa uh, ang stimulus natin is electrical field. For example, electrical conductivity or the electric constant. So, nakakapagparaan ba ng kuryente yung, prop, yung material na yun o um, hindi siya nakakapagdaan ng kuryente? Sabihin, <clears throat> does the material um, let current to flow or hindi? Yun yung tinatawag nating electrical properties or electrical conductivity first specifically. Pangatlo, meron tayong tinatawag na thermal behavior from the word thermal, may kinalaman yan sa heat. <clears throat> heat capacity and thermal conductivity. Okay. Then we have magnetic properties. So, this demonstrate the response of a material to the application of Magnetic field. Madali siya. Namamagnet ba siya o hindi? Naapektuhan ba siya ng magnetic properties or magnetic field o hindi? Then, we have optical properties. When we say optical, may kinalaman sa ilaw or electromagnetic radiation. So, pwede natin sabihin na translucent ba yung material or ibig sabihin na does it uh, allow light to pass through or opaque ba siya, hindi niya hinahayaan. <clears throat> Yun yung mga optical properties. Or nagre-reflect ba siya ng light o hindi? Nagre-refract ba siya ng light o hindi? Then finally, we have the deteriorative characteristics or properties. Ito naman may kinalaman sa radioactivity or chemical reactivity ng materials. Kapag... <clears throat> Hinalo ko ba siya sa tubig, sasabog ba siya, o nagiging reactive ba siya? Yun yung mga deteriorative properties. Okay. In addition sa structure at sa property, another two words na best defining material is what we call the processing and the performance. So basically, with regard to the relationship of these four components, the structure of a material will depend on how it is processed. Nakadepende yung structure ng material sa processing niya. And, yung performance naman ng material ay nakadepende rin or it is also a function of its properties. 
basically, ito yung relasyon nila ang apat. Yan. Through processing, makikreate na, ma ma madedetermine natin yung structure. And through structure, madedetermine mo yung properties. And finally, from properties, malalaman mo yung performance ng isang material. So, just to give you an example, we have here three um, tablets. So, meron tayong three disks. Sabi na natin, thin disk ng specimen placed over some um, printed matter. So, very obvious na pag makikita natin dito sa leftmost part, translucent siya. Ibig sabihin, nakikita it allows light to pass through. Ibig sabihin, nakikita mo kung ano man yung nasa likod niya. So, that is an optical property. Then, papunta natin sa gitna, partially, it can allow light to pass through. Pero hindi kasing translucent nung leftmost. Medyo nakikita mo pa rin yung sulat sa likod, pero hindi na kasing linaw. Then, yung pinaka-rightmost, hindi na talaga natin makita yung print dun sa likod. So, basically, when we consider the optical properties ng tatlong to, makikita natin na magkakaiba sila. Si leftmost ay translucent, si rightmost ay opaque, at yung nasa gitna is medyo translucent, but medyo opaque din. Pero, alam nyo ba na itong tatlong to ay same lang ang pagkakagawa? So, these three thin disks, All of, all of these specimens are of the same material. Specifically, gawa sila sa aluminum oxide. Pero, magkakaiba yung processing nila. Okay? Yung pinaka-leftmost side, itong translucent or transparent, gawa yan sa isang single crystal. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang high degree ng perfection. Purong-puro yan. Kaya siya nagiging transparent. The center one is composed of numerous and very single crystals that are all connected. <clears throat> yung boundaries between dun sa small crystals scatter a portion of the light reflected from the printed page which makes this material optically translucent. Itong hule, the specimen on the right is composed not only of many small interconnected crystals but also a large number of very small pores or void, void spaces. These pores also effectively scatter their reflected light and render this material opaque. So, madaling sabi, itong tatlong to made up of same material which is aluminum oxide pero magkakaiba sila ng structure At dahil magkakaiba sila ng structure, nagkaroon sila ng um, iba-ibang properties. Specifically, optical properties. So, as you can see, at paano na iba yung structure? Na iba yung structure kasi iba-iba yung processing nila. Itong leftmost, puro, yung nasa gitna, hindi masyadong puro, yung pinaka-right, hindi talaga puro. So, nakadepende. O, yung apat na to, processing structure, properties, and performance, ay connect So, if you would be a material science scientist or material engineering, and you want to design something or some material with a specific type of performance, kailangan mo ngayon i-consider itong apat na to. So, i-consider mo yung properties, after mo i-consider yung properties, i-consider mo yung structure that will give that will give these properties. And after you consider structure, uh, i-consider mo na yung paano siya ma-process para lumabas yung ganitong structure. Then it would be a, it will be a domino effect. Makukuha mo na yung ma-achieve mo na yung performance na gusto mo. So, materials can be classified into Four, basically four classifications. And I know, 
alam na natin itong mga to or hindi man natin alam, familiar tayo sa mga to Amaya, ipapakita ko yung mga examples. Okay. We discussed the first one. When we say metal, metals are composed of one or more metallic elements. For example, iron, aluminum, copper, titanium, gold, nickel, and often non-metallic elements, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, in relatively small amounts. So, pwedeng maging purong metallic element or pwede ring haluan ng non-metallic element. Yung mga nahaluan ng non-metallic elements, ang tawag natin doon, metal alloys. Alloy, A-L-L-O-Y-S. Kapag meron siyang halo na carbon or non-metallic elements, pero konti lang yung pagkakahalo. Mas marami pa rin yung metallic elements. So, anong properties ng metals? Yung atoms nila are arranged in very orderly manner and compared to the ceramics and polymers, they are relatively dense, mabigat. Kasi nga, naka-arrange sila in orderly manner. Meron tayong crystal structure, yun yung tawag natin sa orderly manner. Crystal structure at dense siya, mabigat. Dahil nga mabigat at meron siyang crystal structure, ang nangyayari, nagiging stiff siya and very ductile. Ibig sabihin ng ductile, kaya niyang um, pwede mo siyang applyan ng malalaking pwersa, large amounts of force. Magde-deform siya, pero hindi siya masisira, hindi pa siya magka-fracture. And are resistant to fracture. Kaya nga, yung mga metals, di ba, usually ginagamit sila sa mga um, buildings, sa mga uh, structural components ng buildings, pag magpapatayo tayo, magpapatayo tayo ng bahay, laging merong metal sa loob kasi yun yung pampatibay. Kasi nga, ang metals, matibay talaga sila. They are also extremely good conductors of electricity and heat. So, kung mapapansin natin, yung mga kitchenware natin, for example, yung kaserola natin, gawa yan sa steel, which is a metal, pag inawakan mo, mapapasok ka kaagad, kasi nga, they are good conductors of heat. Then, good conductors din ng electricity, pag uh, kinaskas natin yung wire ng charger natin, makikita natin, merong copper sa loob. Copper is a metal. They are used for conducting electricity. They are not transparent to visible light. So, ibig sabihin, halos lahat sila opaque. So, they do, they do not allow light to pass through. But some of the metals have desirable magnetic properties like iron, copper, and nickel. Ibig sabihin, meron silang namamagnet sila, pero hindi lahat. Some lang. Yan lang yung mga yan. Another classification, uh, ito yung mga example ng metals. So, tinidor, pera, gears, sing-sing, gawain sa metal. Alam natin yan. Another classification, yung ceramics. So, minsan pag naririnig natin yung ceramics, ang unang pumapasok sa isip natin is marble, yung mga uh, pottery, yung pots, yung mga banga, yung mga alam natin ceramics, di ba? Yun yung mga tinatawag natin traditional ceramics. So, ceramics are composed of compounds between metallic and non-metallic elements. So, pinaghalong metallic and non-metallic elements siya. So, they are most frequently oxides, nitrides, and carbides. In addition, what some refer to as traditional ceramics, those composed of clay minerals, kagaya ng porcelain, as well as cement glass. Ceramic materials are relatively stiff and strong. Stiffness and strengths are comparable to those of metals. And they're also very hard. Pero, they are extremely brittle. And they are highly susceptible to fracture. 
ibig sabihin na babasag sila, brittle. So, oo, matigas sila, stiff sila, strong sila, pero madali silang mabasag. Hindi kagaya ng metal na kahit apply natin ng force, halos hindi siya nagde-deform. Pero sa ceramics, hindi nga siya magde-deform, pero mababasag siya. So, nagkakaroon ng fracture. Then, ceramic materials are typically insulated to the passage of heat and electricity. So, kumpara kay metal, si metal, um, good conductor sila. Ibig sabihin, pag pinandaanan mo ng heat, ng electricity, pwede mong uh, nakaka-flow yung heat and electricity sa kanila. Si ceramics, hindi nakaka-flow. Insulative, insulator. Ibig sabihin, they do not allow heat and electricity to pass through them. Kaya nga, di ba, yung kape natin ay yung tasa mo, yung hawakan, hindi umiinit. Pero yung katawan, umiinit. Kung nasan yung kape, pero kapag ginawa mo yung metal, lahat, pati yung hawakan, metal, dadalo yung init. Yung sa hawakan, mapapasok ka. Pero pag ceramics, hindi. They have low electrical conductivities and are more resistant to high temperatures in harsh environments than metals and polymers. They may be transparent, translucent, or opaque, depende yan. Kasi, kagaya nga ng glass. So, you see glass. Glass is a cer ceramic. Yung uh, tawag dito, salamin. Ceramic yan. So, they can be transparent, translucent, or opaque. And some of the oxide ceramics exhibit magnetic behavior. So, classification. Ah, ito, examples ng ceramics. And yung tiles, yung tasa, bricks, glass. At ito, hindi ko alam kung ano ito. Mukhang scissor siya. So, pangatlong classification is the polymer. May ingay. <laughs> Polymers include the familiar plastic and rubber materials. Yung mga taong plastic. Gawa sila sa polymer. They have very large molecular structures. So parang chain-like in nature. Meron silang backbone na carbon atoms. They have low densities. Sabihin, Kumpara sa metal, mas magaan siya. They are not as stiff or nor as strong as these other material types. Sila yung pinaka-weak. So, in terms of stiffness and strength, sila yung mga pinaka-mababang um, stiffness and strength. But they are very extremely ductile and pliable, which means they are easily formed into complex shapes. Sabihin, pwede mo siyang i-mold. Madali lang siyang i-mold. Kaya nga yung mga plastic ngayon, di ba? Halos lahat na ng bagay, pati pa tao plastic na. <laughs> Kasi pwede mong i-mold or gawing sa anumang gusto mong shape through processing. Madali lang. They are relatively inert chemically and underactive in a large number of environments. They have the tendency to soften and or decompose at modest temperatures. They have low electrical conductivities and are non-magnetic. So, ito yung mga kilala nating mga examples ng polymers. Basically, plastic. Then, we have the um, last classification of material. We have the composites. Pag sinabi natin composites, pinaghalo siya dun sa naunang tatlong classification. Pinaghalo metal, ceramic, and polymer. So, kahit ano dun, pag pinagsama ko sa metal and ceramic, composite ang tawag. Pag pinaghalo ko sa metal and polymer, composite ang tawag. Pag pinaghalo mo sa ceramic at polymer, composite ang tawag. Basta kapag pinaghalo mo yung naunang tatlong classification, composite ang tawag dun. So, there are some naturally occurring materials, for example, na composites. For example, wood and the bone are composites. Pero, 
halos lahat na ng composites na iba, ibang composites, almost all of them, they are synthetic. Ibig sabihin, gawa na ng tao. Okay. For example, yung fiberglass. So, ang fiberglass, pinaghalo siyang glass which, a, which is a ceramic and a polymeric or a plastic. So, kaya nga, mas matibay si fiberglass, di ba? Mukha siyang plastic. Si fiberglass, kung alam nyo, pag nagbabasikable kayo, yung ring, yung board pala, gawa sa fiberglass, mukha siyang glass, mukha siyang salamin, pero mas matibay siya, hindi siya nababasag. Nababasag siya, pero hindi kasing weak, or kailangan mo ng mas malakas na force kumpara sa normal na salamin lang. So, ito kasi mga composites, um, Gumagawa tayo ng composites para i-improve yung bagay. Kasi may mga, um, itong, me, itong tatlong na una, metal ceramic polymers, may kanya-kanya silang properties, may kanya-kanya silang um, advantages and disadvantages. Pero, nalaman natin na pwede pa lang, ah, gusto kong kunin yung advantage ng metal at advantage ng ceramic, pwede ko silang pagsamahin. Ano nangyari? Nagiging composite. Yun yung um, importance ng composite. Kapag may gusto kang property ng metal at gusto kang property ng ceramic, paghaluin mo. Composite na yun. So, ginawa siya para ma-improve yung tatlong na una. So, kagaya nga ng fiberglass, maganda yung glass sa lamin. Kaso, madali lang siyang mabasag. So, anong ginawa nila? Kinuha nila yung property ng polymers, ng plastic, na hindi madaling mabasag. Pinalo nila dun sa glass. And yun, nagkaroon na ng fiberglass. Mukhang glass, pero plastic or polymer. The glass fibers are relatively strong and stiff, pero brittle, whereas the polymer is more flexible. Thus, fiberglass is relatively stiff strong and flexible. So, pinaghalo-halo nila yung mga advantages or yung mga positive properties nung um, ceramic at polymer para mabuo yung composite na to. In addition, it has a low density. Another technologically important material is the carbon fiber reinforced polymer or the CFRP composite. Carbon fibers that are embedded within a polymer. These materials are stiff, fur, and stronger than glass fiber, reinforced materials, pero mas mahal. So, ito, yung mga, ito yung mga comparison ng mga iba't ibang classification ng materials in terms of their density. Kung napapansin natin, ang pinaka-dense is metal and relatively, ang pinaka-less dense or least dense, are polymers and composites. In terms of stiffness, makikita natin that metals and ceramics are the stiffest, pinaka mataas ang stiffness, and polymers have rel relatively has the lowest, have the lowest stiffness. In terms of tensile strength, pansin natin, si metal pa rin ang pinaka matibay, and polymer ang pinaka uh, mababang strength. In terms of resistance to fracture or fracture toughness, metals pa rin, then medyo magkaka-level na yung tatlo. For the electrical conductivity, we have metal. Okay, pinaka electrically conductive si metal. And least electrically conductive sa ceramic at si polymer. Okay. So, that's it for the introduction. So, meron pa tayong mga tinatawag na advanced materials kasi as we go through modern ages, marami nang na-invent ng different type of materials. Meron na tayong tinatawag na semiconductors, meron na tayong tinatawag na biomaterials, smart materials, and nanomaterials. Pero, that would be our research activity or classwork number one to be submitted tomorrow. So, our classwork number one would be research on the following. So, brief lang, konti lang. And 
also cite examples. Advanced materials such as semiconductors, biomaterials, smart materials, nanomaterials. So, maximum of two pages. So, dapat two pages lang yung report natin. Letter size or short. Then, font style is Tahoma and font size is 12. In addition, um, one inch ang margin everywhere. Okay, that's it for lesson number one. See you sa lesson number two.